Navigation stacks are great for letting us make hierarchical stacks of views that let users drill down into our data. But they don't work so well for showing unrelated data. For that, we've got to use SwiftUI's tab view, which makes a button strip across the bottom of the screen where tab in each button shows a different view. Placing tabs inside a tab view is as simple as listing them out one by one. We could say, for example, that we have a tab view with a text of tab one and then text of tab two, like so. However, in practice, you'll always want to customize the way your tabs are shown. In this code right here, the tab bar will be an empty space at the bottom of the screen. I can run it back now. We can try tapping on things. You'll see it works correctly. You can tap basically about here and it jumps to tab two or back to tab one again. But it's a pretty terrible user experience. Instead, it's a better idea to attach a tab item modifier to each view inside your tab view. This lets you customize the way the view shown in the tab bar, providing an image and some text to show next to it. For example, we could say that our first tab here has a tab item of label one with system image star. And then for second tab item, I could say tab item label, oops, label two, system image circle, like so. Let's look a lot better. I'll press command R now. Boom, one, two, much, much clearer. Now, as well as letting users switch uh, by tapping on individual tab items, SwiftUI also lets us control the current view programmatically using state. And this takes four steps. First, we wanna make a new at state property to track the tab that's currently showing. Second, you wanna modify a property to a new value when you wanna to jump to a different tab. Third, pass that as a binding into our tab view so it's tracked automatically. And then fourth, tell SwiftUI which tabs we've shown for each value of that property. And the first three of those are simple enough. Let's just get them out of the way. First, we need some kind of state up here to track the current tab. So we've got a new property here in our content view. I can say at state private var selected tab equals one. Second, we've got to modify that somewhere, which will ask SwiftUI to switch tabs. Now in our little demo, we could change this text here to be a button instead. We could say this is a button called show tab two. And when it's pressed, we'll say select the tab is equal to two as a string, like that. Third, we've got to bind the selection of this selected tab property to our tab view. This is past the parameter when you make the tab view. So change your code to this. Selection, select the tab with a dollar sign. Two way binding, right? Now for the interesting part. When we say selected tab equals two, how does SwiftUI know what tab that represents? Now you might think that the tabs in a tab view could be treated as an array, in which case the second tab is stored at index one because it's starting from index zero, right, for the first tab. But that causes all sorts of problems. Okay, what if we move that tab to a different location in our tab view later on? At a deeper level, this really breaks one of the core SwiftUI concepts, which is that we should be able to compose our views freely. If this button was able to say, uh, go to the second tab in the array, it means it has intimate knowledge of how its parent, the tab view, is configured. It has to know the exact tab structure of its parent. This is a very bad idea, and so SwiftUI has a much better solution for us. We can attach a unique identifier to each view and use that for the selected tab. These are just tags and they're attached with a tag modifier like this. We can say this thing here, you are tagged as one and you are tagged as two, like that. And so we've now given this a very clear name. This thing is tab one with a tag of one and that is tab two with a tag of two and so when we say jump to the string two, it'll jump to the one with a tag of two like we have here. And now this code will work correctly. We ought to be able to switch in our views by pressing these buttons at the bottom or pressing this main button here, show tab two, bing, it activates right away. Now, of course, in practice, just using one and two like strings like this 
isn't ideal either, right? Because these values are fixed and so it just solves the problem of views being moved around, but they aren't easy to remember. Fortunately, you can use whatever values you want inside here instead. You can give each view a string tag that's unique and reflect its purpose clearly. Then use that for your state property. This is genuinely much easier to work with on a long term and is recommended over integers or simple hard code strings and similar. Now, before I finish, there's one last tip. It is common to want to use navigation stack and tab view at the same time, but you've got to be careful. Tab view prefers very strongly to be the parent view, with the tabs inside it having a navigation stack as necessary rather than the other way around. 